Welcome to Call Me Oz Live. I am not allowed to move. <laughs> Larry, may I move? Yes. <laughs> no. Uh, so anyways, welcome to Call Me Oz Live. <laughs> Glad you guys could join us. We have an awesome show tonight. As always, we always have an awesome show. My special guest tonight is a really awesome guy. Goes by the name of Ben Shaw. Actually, that's his name. And he runs and owns Archetype Tattoo studio uh we're going to talk about his place it's going to blow your mind i promise you that um also going to talk about the three venues that i was at last week yes i said only three no i wasn't at 12 or 15 and the upcoming nine venues that i will be at this week on the call me oz website i'm going to show you a couple of things one we have a new home page and it's going to blow your mind then we're going to talk a little bit about family fun where to find family fun in albuquerque because now that the weather's warming up you might want to take your family out to do things and we have a family page just for that also we're going to talk about the billiards darts and foosball page because that's just a cool page you know it's just that's just the way it is um we have some events going on uh one place where you can go every friday night take your family do some family friendly karaoke uh, we have a special karaoke menu with $5 pizzas, $4 beers, um, a Los Lunas venue that is added Tuesday nights, a karaoke competition that will give away $1,500 in cash plus additional prizes, um, a business-to-business -business networking event um, this spring, actually March 23rd, Buck D at the Posh, if you can believe that, a West Side venue that is changing its nights and times, and guess what the new mexico state fair karaoke showcase season is about to begin and we have booked 16 venues so far we're going to tell you what the venues are what towns are located in what days and what time so you can start making your plans on which one you're going to try out at we're also going to talk about um, our latest sponsors and i have a foot long joke for you you guys don't go anywhere i'm not allowed to move right now but maybe Larry will let me move in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Call Me Oz Live. I've got the man right here, Ben Shaw. Say hello to everybody. Hey everybody, how you doing? Yes, this is Ben Shaw. He is the owner of Archetype Tattoo uh, Studio. Uh, we're going to talk more about him and his amazing business that he's got going on over there. Uh, I swore I would never have a tattoo ever in my life. And um, well, you guys changed my mind. Oh yeah. Good job. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's an amazing thing, honestly. It was Good long thing. overdue. <laughs> Listen to what he says. It's long overdue. Like, you should have done this like a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Right? Right? Well, we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Um, one thing I do want everybody to know is that we do not have call-ins tonight. So, just so you know, we are actually in the process of doing something a little bit different. It will not be available on the show tonight. But... In the future, you will be able to call the 505-286-1520 number, leave a message there about your events, about your gigs, about your life, I guess. I don't know. 
that could be scary, uh, just whatever, <laughs> and um, we will play it on the show live as long as it's appropriate. Yeah. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully, if someone has censored that, right? Uh, yes. Censor exactly. button. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we can go beep, mm -hmm. uh, or we can just not play it at all. We can just delete it if we want to. That's cool. Yeah. The other thing you can do too is you can send an email to live, L-I-V-E, in case you didn't know how to spell that, at callmeoz.net. And by sending an email, we can either show it on the, on the show, or if you send a flyer or whatever, we can screenshot it and show it on the show. So that's what we're going to do. That's awesome. We were getting a lot of phone calls in, and uh, a lot more than we thought. So anyways, just want to say welcome back to the show. It's hump day. It is the hump day. Last week, I was in the beautiful city of El Paso, New Mexico. Actually, it is Texas. It sure does feel like New Mexico. <laughs> it's just like, if you haven't been down there, it's like one giant city. Like, you got Juarez, or Juarez, whatever you want to say. And then you have El Paso, and then you've got the west side. And then that pretty much just grows right into Las Cruces, too. So, uh, I just want to say hello to Eric and David. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy the show. We're going to make you laugh a few times, probably. Um, I won't. Yeah, Ben says he won't. No. Ben's a serious guy. Real serious. I can try to be. <laughs> no, Ben's a great guy. So, um, last week, I was in El Paso. I went to Rosa's Cantina. Uh, that is with uh, KJ Peppo from Sound Entertainment. Um, and then I... Uh, on Thursday, I went to Frankie's at Oasis Lanes, also with Stella, which is also with Sound Power uh, Entertainment. And then um, last night, I was at Tractor Brewery Wells Park. Nice. And uh, did some singing down there. Had a good time with KJ McLean. Um, they do karaoke Tuesdays from 8 to 12. Uh, one more thing that I did while I was in El Paso is I met with the event coordinator for Sunland Park Casino that we're working on a big project down there. And I actually stopped in the casino to see the stage. And yeah, I think this place will work for a pretty big competition. Awesome. Stage is about half the size of the state fair, but it's really cool. That's fine. We'll make it happen. Um, tonight, after I leave the show, I'm going to head over to Copper Lounge for about an hour, do some singing there with those guys. Um, they do karaoke every Wednesday from 8 to 12 with Cool Breeze Karaoke. And then tomorrow I've got a busy night, uh, Tractor Brewery on the west side uh, with Kamikaze. They do karaoke on Thursdays from 8 to 12. Then down to Desert Valley Brewing Company right down the road uh, with Kamikaze Karaoke. They do it on the same night, same time. And then I'm going to head over to the Effing Bar with Famous Amos. And they do it on Thursdays from 9 to 1. And then over to the Soch with Camo from 9 to 1. Uh, they do karaoke on Thursdays, 9 to 1. Are you keeping up with all this? Yeah, I've been taking notes the whole time. Awesome. We're going to have a test on this in a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Then on Friday, can you believe that Friday is February 29th? I just can't believe it already. Jesus. It's crazy. It's my birthday on the 2nd. That's Saturday. Yeah. No, that would be Sunday. <laughs> No. Wait, no, it's no, Saturday. It's Saturday. Oh, because there is no March 1st. That's what the... No, there's no <laughs> I know, it's like February 29th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so on Friday, February 29th, <laughs> you will find me at the local brew house in Rio Rancho with Jack. They do karaoke every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 to 12. So that would be February 28th, 29th, and March 2nd. And then uh, I'm going to head down to Lucky 66 Bowl with KJ Puddles. One of these days, I'm going to tell the story where Puddles got his name, but for now, we'll leave it alone. They do a karaoke on Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 9 to 1. And then on Tuesday of next week, uh, the Elks Lodge in Rio Rancho with Tommy Hurricane. They do it every Tuesday from 8 to 12. And Sidelines with Country Joe every Tuesday and Wednesday from 8 to 12. And I need to tell you something about Sidelines just so you know. Um, let's see. So is next week the first full week of March? It is, correct? Okay, so that means that Sidelines on the west side will be doing, uh, so they did karaoke Monday, Tuesday of this last week. Starting next week, they will be going to karaoke on Tuesday and Wednesday, not on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and they're changing their time from 9 to 1 to 8 to midnight. So 
You got that? Got it. Okay. Just want to say howdy, Angie and Tisha and Karaoke Joe and James and Jackie. Good to see you guys. If you all need a tattoo, this is going to be the guy, just so you know. Okay? So, anyway, did you guys get that about sidelines? Just, did they get that? Yeah, they did. They, they got nodding. That. They got it. That's good. Okay. Just making sure. Thumbs up. We see all your thumbs going up, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... That is what's going on. That's where I've been. That's where I'm going to be. So, anyways, that's what we're going to do. So, I'm going to show, we're going to show people a few things on the website now. Okay. Because uh, we got some uh, cool things going on on the website. <laughs> so, here's where we are. This is the old uh, website right here, right? This is the old main homepage. I'm going to give you a glimpse of the new one. Let's see? There's the new one. There's the old one. <laughs> nice glimpse. There's the old one. Here's the new one. You guys like that? New hotness. Right? It's kind of different. It's hot. It's so hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Who is that? Oh, that's Archetype oh, Tattoo. Yeah, I know those guys. I know those guys they're too. Pretty cool. They're yeah. They're pretty awesome people. Yeah, they're pretty cool. So, yes. Let's see our part of our email it or our address is cut off the I see that oh you're it's not 2019 a, it's 2019 Manal <laughs> there's no 19 Manal yeah so see it's on the old one here so a little bit of a tweak that we need to do on the side there but hmm. so this gives you an idea of what the new website's going to be looking like uh, <laughs> you impressed oh yeah yeah good yeah. did you draw this yeah uh that's a that's a, a collaboration of my old business partner yeah yeah I was going to say, I don't know, you guys had to really work on that. Like, that is so much detail. Do you know when I figured out how much detail was in that thing? Is when we were doing the canopy, mm -hmm. and I had to press on. Oh, yeah. And oh, it was like, stickers is yeah, horrible with that. Like, this little sticker was here, and I was like, I had to keep looking at your logo going, wait, where did that sticker go? Oh, it went here. Wait, no, that's wrong. <laughs> it was crazy. So it's a very intricate design. It's not something that just took minutes. So, uh, so what I want to show you guys is the billiards, darts, and foosball page. Um, so on the old website, it's right there. And on the new website, it is right there. And it's still in the old. So this is a little confusing, I guess, to the public. But anyways, uh, if you want to go shoot some pool, here's some places where you can go shoot some pool at. Okay, uh, if you want to maybe go do some darts, these are places that do darts or have leagues um, or have competitions. And then we actually have some foosball locations. So for those of you that are into foosball, like me, um, here's a few places that we know has a foosball table. Um, yeah, so the other page I want to show you is right here the under 18 family page i don't know how many of you out there have kids me right mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. I, in fact i'm probably thinking that the majority of you out there have kids and you've got to find things to do right mm -hmm. so if you got to find things to do you can just go to our family fun page and you can find stuff to do uh, these are just regular listings they have websites that can go to for all the information. Um, I'm really big in parks, uh, especially when I was raising my kids. A lot of times we'd go to parks. We called it park hopping. We had a good time. We'd find different parks all over the place. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. So you can go right here to the parks of Albuquerque and um, it takes you over here. And in this page, you can find every single park in the city. And you can find out uh, all, everything you need to know about the parks by clicking on city parks. Did you know this, Ben? No, I'm impressed. So I, I'm definitely going to have to check this out. Yeah, this is cool because like you can just go to the map and um, when you find the different parks, you can just look into them and find out um, whether they have drinking fountains, whether they have the amenities or whatever's in the parks themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so especially if you're bringing kids along, it's important to know. Oh, yeah. Is there a play area? Do they have party. basketball courts? Do they have shade? Do they have bathrooms? They have <laughs> That's usually a good, mm -hmm. a good thing to have, mm -hmm. exactly. So anyways, so I hope you all enjoyed the uh, 
the little thing there on our website and what's going on. Do you feel small? You should be because like the website's ten times bigger than us behind us. Oh, is it? Yeah. Are we in the website? Yeah, <laughs> like we're shrunk. Oh. Yes. Can't see. Uh, we're back. <laughs> now we're back downtown. Yes. We're live. We're live. I think. Are we live? I hope so. Uh, we're alive. I don't know if we're live. Right. So here's what's going on. And then after we talk about these events, we're going to talk about Ben and Archetype Tattoo because uh, it's an awesome place. So I know I said that at least once. Um, so Red Velvet Underground every Friday, family friendly karaoke. Even if you don't like karaoke, you can still go watch people do karaoke. <laughs> For the watch. <laughs> actually, there's some amazing singers. Yeah, so, I bet. Um, we actually get a pretty good mix now of people that some people sing and some people don't. They actually just go just to listen to people sing because mm -hmm. they're pretty darn good. So they do it every Friday from 7 to 11 with Kamikaze Karaoke. We have a special karaoke menu. Uh, it starts at like 5 bucks, and then there's drink specials and stuff like that. Um, and also, Red Velvet Underground has comedy um, on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and they have live bands, they have live music all the rest of the time. So, then we've got this thing called the Spring Ball coming up. It is on Saturday, March 23rd from 7 to 11 p.m., and we're still getting the location pinned down, um, but this is a cooperative business-to-business -business networking group. You can find all the information on Call Me Oz, just click on the source poster and it'll take you to a page where you can get all the information um, but what we'll be doing is so the way they did this this is pretty cool yeah. uh, it's almost like a chamber of commerce so like let's say you're a business which you are yep. um, instead of paying a $500 annual fee okay. or whatever you still pay a $500 fee kind of um, but what you get is you get 10 raffle tickets and those 10 raffle tickets can be given to your staff or okay. whatever or whoever you want and the raffle ticket gets you into the event, and there will be uh, some entertainment going on. Mm -hmm. Magicians, comedians, acoustic guitarists. Really? Um, and then they'll be doing radio spots, and they will be doing a lot of announcements and stuff. And so the raffle ticket is good to win door prizes, mm -hmm. and to eat, and the first drink. That's important. Yes, that's very important. <laughs> Yes, got to have lots of drinks. No, just kidding. So um, so that's what this is. And uh, so you can uh, go on the go on there as a business owner and, and get set up. That's cool. So it's kind of cool. So this is their kickoff ball. And um, I think it's going to be a really cool event. And so we'll have a DJ there. The last hour of the event, they will be doing karaoke. So see, you get to sing, Ben. <laughs> just so you all know, yep. Ben doesn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> so um and then ribs in los lunas has added karaoke to their tuesday nights so now they're on tuesday and thursday and then um camino rael winery and tap room has their massive annual competition going on they are qualifying two people every single saturday night all you do is go in at seven o'clock sign up they start at eight o'clock they pick two of the best singers each saturday night to come back to the semifinals on may the 11th where they will eliminate half of them, and then, uh, or they'll eliminate all but 12, and then those 12 come back the following Saturday on the 18th, and the first place winner will win 800 bucks cash. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby for singing a song. Yeah, right. And then second place wins $400, third place wins $200, and fourth place wins $100. So um, they usually get a lot of other prizes too during the year so by the time the 18th come i'm sure it'll be a lot more than that um so that's what's going on camino Rioel winery and tap room in los lunas and they do karaoke every wednesday and uh saturday and then uh buck d you know the really funny guy you know don't you? oh you don't know no ben don't know funny guy buck d uh he does the shut up and talk show uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, and um, he's going to be at the Posh on Friday night doing a good stand-up comedy show. Nice. So if you get a chance, go check that out. If it's not sold out, it might be pretty close to sold out. They were almost sold out a long time ago. Uh, so real quick, Ben, uh, before we talk about Archetype and yep. you, I'm going to fill everybody in on the New Mexico State Fair. Okay. So what's going on with the State Fair at this point 
is we now have all the primary uh, auditioning venues locked up. So we now have the 11 venues that are ready to roll. Um, this will start with Lucky 66 Bowl. The preseason will begin on April the 19th. It will happen every Friday night. Up to 12 people can sign up. And four will qualify to come back on May 31st. So after the five weeks, those 20 will return and they will give it their best shot. And 10 of them will be the first 10 to the New Mexico State Fair nice. to sing at the fair. And a um, couple of reasons why you would want to do the preseason instead of waiting until the later season to try. Here's a couple of things to think about. First of all, at all the other auditions, only 8 out of 20 are going to qualify. So at Lucky 66, it's 10 out of 20, so the odds are better right off the bat. The second thing you might want to think about is our first place and second place champions came from Lucky 66 last year. And the most important reason, because I hear this throughout the season, especially as we get to the ending of the season, is if you are the first ones to qualify, you get to pick the best nights at the fair. Hmm. Everybody wants to sing on that first Friday and that first Saturday, but we only have 12 spots each night, so we have 24 spots. So by the time that we have gone to the third venue of auditioning, those nights are already full. So if you want to be able to sing at the fair on Friday, Saturday, you need to start at Lucky 66 Bowl. Don't wait till later on. Um, now, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from waiting till later on. I'm just saying that this is the way it is. Um, so after Lucky 66, we will have, um, looks like, the Miners Audition, uh, which will be on Saturday, June 8th. And the way the Miners Audition is going to work this year, it's going to be at a park. Pretty sure I know which park it's at, but until I sign the contract, I want to wait on that. But um, at this park, 24 of the miners can sign up. They will all compete on the same night, and those and we will pick 12 out of those 24 to go to the fair. And then that will be it. This is going to be sponsored by New York Pizza Department mm. downtown. Yeah. Good pizza. Uh, it's actually Back Alley Draft House, which they brought back karaoke on Friday nights. So uh, that happens every Friday from 7 to 11. They are family friendly. So you guys can go down there with your family, have some pizza, sing some songs, and have a good time, and get ready for the fair. So that's what's going on there. Then the next audition will be Camino Royale Winery and Tap Room. That will happen on Saturday, June 15th. Then Zulo's Bistro. That will happen on Thursday, June 20th. And then uh, Billiards Palace will be on Friday, June 28th. And then the Golden Cantina at Cities of Gold will be Saturday, July 13th. And then Effing Bar and Grill will be Thursday, July 18th. Uh, Fiesta's Cantina will be Thursday, July 25th. Marisco Saltamar and Los Lunas will be uh, Thursday, August 1st. Leo's Nightclub will be Wednesday, August 7th. And the last one will be Kilt Check Brewing, and that will be Sunday, August the 18th. So those are all the primary auditions. Then we have our satellites. Uh, so the satellites will be Red Velvet Underground. They will do um, on June 7th, 14th, and 21st. 12 can sign up. Four will qualify to come back on June 28th, and uh, two will go to the fair. And then we have... Um, the Skillet in Las Vegas, and next week I will tell you about those auditioning dates. And then we have the Alley Cantina in Taos. Again, next week I'll give you those dates. Hub City Brewing Company in Belen, and I'll get those dates. And then Our Lady of Belen also, which will probably be during the Valencia County Fair. So at this point we have space for two more satellite venues, and then we're fully booked and ready to roll. So uh, we're looking for a total of 18 uh, venues across the state this year instead of just in Albuquerque. Wow. So, pretty cool. Uh, so, basically, that's what's going on. And, of course, we do Call Me Oz Live every single Wednesday. And we find cool people like Ben Shaw to, to join us. So, <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Um, so, I'm going to let you tell the story of how Call Me Oz and Archetype Tattoo got together. Well, you see, there was this burning bus 
Right. There's these children on there, and I really wanted to save them, <laughs> but I didn't want to get burned, so I ran away. But Billy jumped in there with his cape on, and he took out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Great story, man. One of uh, your past representatives had come into Archetype. We actually got tattooed there, and uh, he wanted to get us involved with Call Me Oz, and I thought it was a really cool idea, and got signed up. But shortly thereafter, he no longer continued his efforts with you, so fortunately, that led you into the shop. And right. You and I got to connect and see that we're very like-minded, although our, our artistic flavors are maybe... On two different spectrums, mm -hmm. more on the skin and on paper. Yours is vocal, Singing, right? And yeah, since then, I mean, we've we've developed a good friendship, good working relationship. We continue to advertise with you guys, and now we're we're on your guys's Easy Up and all your <laughs> events. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, I think the thing that caught me about Archetype, there was many many things that caught me about Archetype. Uh, I got to tell you the. The first thing is when you walk into Archetype, I hope you don't mind this, when you walk into Archetype, you're not walking into a tattoo parlor. No. You are working in, you're walking into a studio of artists that know what they're doing. Absolutely. And it's very clean and it's very organized and it's very professional. So from a customer's point of view, Mm -hmm. that's exactly what I saw the minute I walked in there. Fantastic. Well, that's what so, we're going for, so I'm glad yeah. that you picked up on that. Yes, well, you definitely did that. And then the work, uh, like Larry is showing a lot of the work right now behind us and stuff like that, um, is just incredible. The, um, the intensity of it, the accuracy of it, the sharpness of everything. Um, I am that guy that always said, I'll never get a tattoo. Never, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. <laughs> and Look at you now. Right, so I have like this oh. really big tattoo. See it? Oh. It's super visible, though. <laughs> yeah, Everyone can see it. It's big. It's huge. It's like the whole size of my finger. <laughs> <laughs> like a finger sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> they tease me about it all the time. Uh. Um, <laughs> they say that I should get a bigger tattoo. Well, he should, shouldn't he? Right? <laughs> He's asking you guys, should I get a bigger tattoo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll make bets and we'll see what happens later. <laughs> right, let's see what everybody says on the comments. Mm -hmm. um, so you have an amazing staff over yes. here. He's kind of showing the staff. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric is the one who did mine. Yeah. Uh, Megan yes. is usually, she's up at the front. Uh, and then there's, of course, Eddie and Aldo and... Um, Carlos. Yep. So amazing crew. Um, well, so Archetype Tattoo was founded in 2010, okay. and it was on Lomas and Adams Street in a huge 5,000 square foot building. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is we grew exponentially. Me and my past business partner Jesper Torres and I grew to about a 13 man shop. It was huge. Jeez. Yeah, we had way way too many people, and dealing with 13 artists was difficult at times because, you know, we're artists. We're a little more emotional at times, right? <laughs> and Archetype Tattoo's always been about doing a lot of events in the community, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a little bit. Right. But it was those six or those five that you were seeing a picture of. I mean, I guess you can't, I guess you can include me since I was on there. They were at all the events. Those are the ones who I could count on. Not only are they f freaking high quality artists and mm -hmm. great tattoo artists but those are real people right there that truly care about Albuquerque and when it was time to to move to our new location which again we'll talk about in a second this was the crew that had to come with me so nice yeah they they not only will do great work but their customer service is paramount and their health and safety is amazing so right right and they're great people that was something that yeah I was impressed with with Eric when I came in there he was very conscious about like how clean mm -hmm. uh, and disinfected everything was yeah right. I, I can i can uh well I, so not only am i a, a tattoo artist but i'm also the chairman for the board of body art practitioners mm -hmm. so that is the regulatory board that oversees all the licensure here in the state so health and safety is a high 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 priority for me so i make sure that all the artists and of course they too want that to be uh you know paramount as well but that is key to archetype it's right safe and clean yeah, well, and, and there's lots of reasons for that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, tattoos are not just pretty decals on their skin. Right. They're, they're flesh wounds. 
Mm-hmm. And I consider them a minor topical surgery, so they need to be treated with that same seriousness. Well, and I think when you have that mentality right there, like you just said, that makes the difference yeah. on how you're going to go about doing this. Mm-hmm. You know, is that you're looking at it as a surgical procedure as opposed to just throwing some ink in somebody's body. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'd be surprised how many, I mean, just something as simple as and it's something to pay attention to next time you're in a tattoo shop or a convention, watching a tattoo artist work and then put their machine down with their dirty glove, grab their cell phone, touch a device and whatnot, and go back mm-hmm. to touching and working on their client. I mean, just right there, you've potentially given them staph or hepatitis. I mean, it is that it is that easy, right? So, right, um, right. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. So the the next thing that, so like I said, I was impressed the first time I walked into Archetype. And the cool thing about Archetype, oops, is, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, if you go sit down in the little couch area <laughs> yeah. and you're hanging out waiting to get tattooed or talk to them or whatever, you're going to see this really cool acrylic sitting right there. It says, if you're looking for fun, find it at Call Me Oz. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember the acrylic? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes we happily display it in our yes. waiting area. So that is awesome. Um, so the thing that was so cool was it was shortly after we started working with each other. Mm-hmm. You guys did an event at O'Neill's, mm-hmm. um, and that was Art Fusion for a Cause. And if yeah. you can believe it, I had never heard of this. Mm-hmm. But I guess it happens quite a bit. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, actually, today we're just working on a press release for a new one, but Art, Art Fusion for a Cause is five years old, and we had done it mostly at Tractor Brewery uh, in Wells Park. Right, right. Uh, every once, right. Uh, every second Wednesday of the month at 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And what that is, is Art Fusion is a fun event. It's where we take four different easels, mm-hmm. four different artists, and we have those artists working on the, the easels, and then every three minutes, they step to the right and work on the next piece, and then they step to the right after that, work on the next piece, on and on and on in three-minute increments until we've created some really cool, unique art. Now, that artwork, while it's being created, which is fun to watch, right? It's fun yeah, to watch it, it be created. It's fun watching to, it. And, yeah. and seeing us kind of trip over each other and mess stuff up and try and drink <laughs> yep. in between it, it's, it's been very entertaining. And the whole time, we're selling raffle tickets. And those raffle tickets are to win those pieces of artwork. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, once we're done, we raffle them off. And at the end, we take all the proceeds we generate and give it to a different nonprofit each month. Or, or it was it each month. Right. Uh, Art Fusion for a Cause at O'Neill's was a cool event um, that was fun because we weren't in a pre-existing bar with the pre-existing clientele. Right. We rented out Rob's place on the, on the east side of it, which was a completely empty space. And it was cool to see that we could pack that that facility. I and mean, it was packed. You were there. I mean, <laughs> I lost count around 150, and yeah. then I saw people come in and leave. I mean, it was it was a good uh, gauge for us to see how successful it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's one of those we're still continuing to build it, and we still want more people to learn about it. But those who know about it continue to come to it. So um, that's a good segue. We do have one coming up again. Yeah. Uh, uh, last time you were there O'Neill's we benefited New Mexico Autism Society and that was in April of last year during Autism Awareness Month mm-hmm. next month's April and we're going to be benefiting New Mexico Autism Society again something nice. we're going to be doing annually we really really love that organization and this time it's going to be at Ponderosa, Ponderosa Brewery and I can get you the address it's in Bellama in Old Town oh, I'm sorry yeah in Old Town okay um, yeah it's it's a cool nice facility it's going to be it's going to be a fun event because we're going to be set up right in front of all the brewing equipment. Oh, so it'll wow. So it be a really cool like, photo opportunities. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one and, and helping to expose Ponderosa to you know, our people. And they have he has all that up on the screen behind us right now with uh, Ponderosa Brewing Company, yeah. where it's at. There you um, go. So you guys can just start following this if... If you haven't liked the Archetype Tattoo Facebook page yet, you should like it now. Mm -hmm. And then that way you're up to date on what's going on over there. Um, Because, like I said, the Art Fusion for a Cause, I had no idea what this was going to be like. He explained this to me, but it wasn't clicking until I actually went and saw this. And it's epic. It is (laughs) epic. They've got, like, all the artists and stuff. And and like he said, they start, they have the four uh, easels up there and... One artist starts, if you could just imagine this, you just have to put yourself in this place. So you've got one artist here, you've got Megan over here that starts doing her thing. And so she starts, and then three minutes later, she has to leave her picture, Mm -hmm. 
go to this other picture that a different artist started and she has to continue on that picture mm -hmm. and then somebody else moves into her picture and has to pick up from there so by the time you get done with this mm -hmm. thing you've got multiple artists that have worked on these pictures and they just come out so intense yeah it's like wow well, where'd that come from anyway and the most of us that have been doing this together for a while we create some really unique unique Nice work, right? Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised in the past when we were kind of working through the, you know, figuring everything out. <laughs> Some of the artwork that came out from there was uh, interesting. <laughs> and it's, we were like, we, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to a good cause. <laughs> uh, did they, I wonder if they were thinking... Did your kids draw this for uh, you? <laughs> well, we'd, sometimes we'd invite the audience to come up, and we learn not to do that. Anymore, oh, right? yeah. Then, you, know, you don't know what you get sometimes. Right. <laughs> oh, that could be bad. Yeah. Yeah, at least with your people, you could set rules and boundaries. Oh, yeah. Well, we've, we've, got, a, we've got the system down now. Yeah. So. yeah, like I say, it was... And you could tell you guys have done this before. Yeah. You could definitely tell that it had been done before. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was really cool how you do it. Yeah, where you buy... So you buy... Uh, Five dollar raffle ticket. Five dollar raffle tickets on that picture, and you can buy it in the beginning before it even starts, while it's blank, or you can buy it as it's developing, mm -hmm. and that's what was really really cool about mm -hmm. it. And then whoever gets it gets it. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, really it's really awesome. Cool. So it's it's April twenty sixth from okay. seven to eleven at Ponderosa, and if you go to our Facebook page, we will we just created the flyer. I don't know if Chelsea got it up just yet. It should be there soon. But uh, keep an eye on that, and you should hopefully see the flyer. It's not up there yet. Yeah. I'll text her now. <laughs> <laughs> we have a print release thing coming up, though. Oh, nice. That's March 16th. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We, okay. uh, another event, March 16th. We have a, a print release. Uh, check right. it out. Come by and Very see what we're doing. Cool. Right on. Well, good. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are just uh, cranking along and yeah. you know doing all that. So um, what other charities have you worked with? You know, I have that in my Dropbox app, and I have a list. So let's, <laughs> we'll come back to that in a minute. How about that? <laughs> that works. Um, while you do that, um, tell us about the Guild of Ethical Tattooists. Sure, I'm sure. Kind of, kind of curious about that. Um, I know it's not big and blasted or anything like that, but it's around, and so. So the, the Guild of Ethical Tattooists was spawned and co-founded by myself and my past business partner, Jess Batonis. Okay. And the whole purpose of that was to get tattoo artists to come together and be able to communicate about things in the regulation world because we are regulated, we were regulated under the Barbers and Cosmetology Board, which I used to be a, a member of. Mm -hmm. Did not work well. Right, it's we, not exactly. I was the only tattoo artist on a board trying to explain to barbers and cosmetologists <laughs> about tattooing. We never got anything done. Right. Uh, our rules were not written properly. We were not being regulated fairly at all. So the whole purpose of the guild was for us to come together, bond together, and have a voice, have a group that could say, hey, we want change. Mm -hmm. And like anything political, sometimes not everyone has to show up, but if you have signatures you have people saying yes you know I'm, I'm behind that um, you can make things happen so the Guild of Ethical Tattooists did start off um, with us just meeting at bars and that's kind of where Art Fusion spawned because it was like hey how can we get tattoo artists to come together and hang out because traditionally tattoo artists didn't really hang out much exactly you know, it's more of a competitive type nature or right uh, type industry so it was like hey come make some art with us together and while you're here, let's talk about what's going on in, in our regulations, right? Which is super boring, so the art was a good way to get people to come. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, we made moved the chains to where we went through the legislative process to create um, Senate Bill 275 in 2015, which was the Board of Body Art Practitioners, which is creating the board that we are now regulated under. And we utilized the Guild as a voice. Uh, they. You know, once you go through the legislative process, you go through the Senate, you go through the House, your bills go to the governor's office, and the governor has an opportunity to review and approve or veto or, or disapprove. But you cannot talk to the governor at that point. But what you can do is you can have people phone in to the governor's mm. office and share support. Right. So that was um, the Guild's strength, as we bombarded the governor's office with calls, so much so that I got a call from the governor's office from a lady saying, 
the governor just signed your bill. Please stop having people call. <laughs> like, we're, that's please stop. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's I mean that's what the guild was. It, it's um, it's a it's a body of people that can come together and defend itself mm -hmm. um, if need be. Uh, currently, we have no no common enemy to to defend ourselves against. So right now, the guild is is a I like to call it a sleeping dog right now. It's there if need be. Right. Um, but for the most part, we we extracted that art fusion, and now there's the the core few of us that really like to do it, and that's what I think the guild is. It it did create something like art fusion. That's something that us artists can use to give back to our community. So very that's nice. Kind of it in that show. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because, like I said, I was always wondering. Now, you guys, uh, what are you doing with the uh, tattoo fiesta this year? Oh yeah. Right? We are going to be the official sponsors of the, the New Mexico Tattoo sponsor. Fiesta this year, yes. Wow. Yeah, which is a, it's a really cool event. You have to go. This is going to be the ninth year, so it's at the Isleta Casino, July 12th, 13th, and 14th. It's a super fun event. I mean, it's a tattoo convention. Mm -hmm. If you've never been, you got to check it out. If you've been to a convention, it's a good one. It's mm -hmm. a high-quality one. It's, it's set up nicely. It has some fun entertainment. Uh, it has not only the best tattoo artist in town, but also some of the best tattoo artists uh, in the world are invited. It is a it is an invite only, so we wow. get people from, uh, we get the the cream of the crop to come to this one. So nice. Yeah, it's it's a really cool event, and yes, so we'll be the sponsors of it. Uh, we'll be, you know, we'll be adding our flavor to it. I'm actually talking, uh, putting in the works about doing a really big art fusion at it too, wow. and try to get some um, some local celebrities involved. So. That would be really cool, Keep especially posted. at that event. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think yeah. so too. That would actually fit that event perfectly mm -hmm. uh, to do something along those lines. So um, that's awesome. And then you were telling me the last time I was visiting with you about expansion getting ready to happen over there. Yeah, uh, well, um, so when we moved, we relocated our shop uh, last June uh, to the 2019 Manal Boulevard area which is Manolan University area, but we moved into a really cool business community. Mm -hmm. uh, our neighbors are amazing. We have a barber shop right next door to us, uh, The Barber Shop, and CrossFit Zephyr, and Line X, and the tattoo shop is not expanding, but the community is expanding. Mm -hmm. So right. on the north side of the building, there's this massive, I want to say maybe two, three acre lot with some massive warehouse sized buildings on that. Uh, property, which the CrossFit gym is going to be expanding into the larger building, and then they're going to be creating a really cool, unique event space as well. So it'll be CrossFit by day, well, with also other types of working out um, services, but then it could be closed off in a, an event space at night. So anything from a bar mitzvah to an art fusion to a, you know, Anything. karaoke event you know there's, there's right. so many different possibilities so. <laughs> just having the event space available is going to be yeah. awesome yeah. yeah and what were you telling me about it that uh, about a patio and yeah they're, they're gonna have a he's gonna we're setting up a fixture to have food trucks can come in and, and interchange so we can have different food trucks leave event nice. be a covered patio area obviously seating um, inside we'll have uh, capabilities during the day for a coffee bar at night a uh, bar bar you know. <laughs> uh, I think we're again it's still uh, still in the works but a really cool sound system it's it'll be cool it'll be a lot of fun yeah that sounds really mm -hmm. awesome yes definitely yeah. so uh, what else do you want to tell everybody about archetype tattoo or you or anything uh, um, <laughs> covered it all yeah I mean uh, you know we're, we do it really appreciate our relationship with call me Oz. you've been nothing but um, like you've like, like an old friend you know, and, like you, <laughs> right. and you treat me that way you treat my shop that way you treat us that way and we're super grateful um, I'm glad that you can recognize what we're trying to do as a tattoo studio you mm -hmm. know archetype uh, by definition is the original prototype which other things follow so not only are we trying to do high quality tattooing with great customer service but again that health and safety is paramount to us right it's all about taking care of our clients health and uh, we hope that other tattoo studios will take that as an example and really focus on that as well because I'm not saying anything but that's not the, the biggest priority for most which right. it's it's not which is scary you know yes. it's detrimental but I'm glad that you recognize that you know and and I'm glad that we've been able to continue to work together and I mean 
if you get enough in me, enough booze, I can sing Garth Brooks, <laughs> Friends in Low Places, really nice. bad. Nice. No, I know that's nice. probably like the song Good. everybody goes to that they yeah. don't want to sing. That's okay, man. So you just <laughs> let a little secret out there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so just show up at one of those uh, karaoke bars that I'm at one of these nights. Wait, which you're at 900 <laughs> this week, apparently. Yeah, I, you can usually find one or two that I'll be at. Yeah. So just show up. If, if I happen to see you there, I'm just going to go up to the bartender and go, so I need you to give him, like, four drinks <laughs> really fast because uh, we want to see him sing. That's not enough. <laughs> Like 14. Okay, okay so 14 <laughs> drinks in one hour. Uh, I'll be doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and uh, we will definitely hear uh, Ben definitely sing. So, yeah. Well, that's really cool. Well, I'm really glad that uh, you definitely joined us. What is this about uh, 5675 push ups? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, my, other, my other addiction is exercise. And it just is amazing that we moved right next door to a CrossFit gym, which this, right. week, <laughs> which this weekend I'm getting my CrossFit certification because I love Ooh, it that much. Oh, congratulations. I'm not changing career fields or nothing. I'm just <laughs> something to put under my belt. Right. But uh, each month, the last uh, four months, we've had challenges. Mm -hmm. And in December, we had a push-up challenge. So I did 5,675 push-ups in the month of December. Jeez. Yeah. It, That's a lot. I tried to go for a thousand, but you know, shot for the moon and hit a cloud. <laughs> yeah. That is pretty awesome, really. Now, are you from Albuquerque originally? No, no. Um, I'm a military brat, oh, so wow. yeah, I'm from all over the place. We uh, just during it, my father and then my stepfather's uh, jobs in the military was one of those uh, moved a lot kind. You know, mm -hmm. like we, the longest we ever stayed anywhere was three years in Germany, but beyond that, it was a year. Uh, six months sometimes. I went to three different middle schools, three different high schools. Um, but uh, I've lived in Albuquerque the longest I've lived anywhere in my entire life. And it's been long enough to where I consider this my home. This right. is my hometown. I How long have you been here? Since 2004. So wow. 15 years now. Yeah. So yeah. I, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with my wife here. I'm raising my children. Nice. I mean, I. I I love the terrain. I mean, not just the, the you know, obviously the natural terrain, but the, the culture and the terrain, the flat grid. You know, I, I like, I like, I like uh, Burke. You know, like, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it fits well with my personality. So. <laughs> well, I think it's awesome where Albuquerque is, is, you know, I mean, you go to the east, just like even where I live, mm -hmm. 30 miles to the east, it is a whole different world over yeah. there. It oh, is yeah. completely different. If you go 30 miles to the west, it's a completely different mm -hmm. world. And if you go north, it, it's it's just like that. And I think that's what I love about New Mexico, yeah. period, is the diversity, diversity in it. You can have, you know, and, and temperature changes. Yeah. And, you know, all four seasons in one day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can. Well, I'll tell you what. Last week when I left El Paso, so I left El Paso Friday morning-ish. Well, I was working at the Border Patrol, and it was like 65 degrees. Nice. Nice, no wind, no nothing. So I left El Paso, started heading north, and I, I, as I was heading into Las Cruces, you could see these clouds up uh, up in the front of me. You know, so I'm driving. I'm like, man, I'm gonna be hitting some weather. It looks like, and but no, as I got closer, those clouds were nothing but dust. So mm -hmm. I'm driving through dust and wind for like forever. It felt like, and then um, and then that kind of cleared out a little bit. Came into Socorro. Just got out of sight of Socorro and I started hitting that blizzard. Mm. And it was snowing sideways all the way through Socorro, through Belen, through Los Lunas. Then I hit Albuquerque. And it was kind of like when I hit Albuquerque, the snow kind of stopped a little bit. And then I started going through Albuquerque and I got up to like Tramway and it was crazy. Mm. There was like three inches of snow on the oh, ground yeah. already. Yeah, and then um, I go through the canyon, and the canyon was so bad, it was a whiteout you couldn't see. So I just turned off my headlights and drove. Huh. But it took me two hours to get from Gibson to Tejeras to home, which yeah. is normally a 45-minute drive. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you can go, like you said, <laughs> Doug, I saw four seasons in one day. Right. That's literally what it was. Well, hopefully no one from out of state heard that and is going to get scared from our weather. <laughs> it's it's <terrifying>. Right? <laughs> Don't get scared. It's really not that bad. Just, Just stay inside. But if you, you're right, right, right. And if you're like from someplace that's never seen snow before, do us all a favor. Don't get in your car. Just 
sit tight until the snow. And and like in Albuquerque, how long did it take? Maybe a couple hours, and it was done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, oh yeah, sun yeah. was shining afterwards. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty typical of, of that. So you know, I'm in a lot of bars, Ben. And uh, I take that. Yeah, really? That's it. Yeah, really. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't drink in bars anymore. When you drink outside well, the bar? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> uh, no, I don't do that. Um, no, but I don't drink alcohol in the bars anymore. I just, uh, but I'm a really good patron. I mean, the waitress makes more money off me on tips by bringing me a Sprite or a root beer than they did off a of beer. Because, like, beers, sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, so you get a dollar tip because your beer is six bucks, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. But now, yeah, it's like I'll order a Sprite and, okay, that'll be $2.12. Okay, here's a five. Keep the change, mm -hmm. you know. And I, it's just the way I believe that it should work. Sure. Um, but uh, mainly because I have to drive from venue to venue sure. to venue. Yeah, and the risk anymore, I just can't take that risk. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, but thank you for not dry, drinking and driving. Oh yeah, yeah. I would hate to run into a friend of mine or something like that by accident. Um, but the funny thing is, is you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in bars, mm -hmm. and it's kind of funny. Like between seven and eight, or eight to nine, nine to ten, it's really pretty calm for the most part. Between ten and eleven, people are starting to get a little buzzed. Mm -hmm. Between 11 and 12, they're really starting to get buzzed. And between 11 and 1, they're just all out trashed, right? Mm -hmm. So you hear a lot of stuff. So the other day, I'm sitting at this bar, and, and I, I, just, I just could not believe this. You know, I hear this guy, and he's trying to pick up on this chick. And, okay, I'll use the word female or lady or whatever you want to say. <laughs> so, so he's like... He's like trying to, I'm just like listening to this out of my third ear, you know, and he's just like, you know, so you must work at Subway. And she looks at him and is like, why do you say that? And he's just like, because I already have a foot long from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear stuff like this all the time uh, it's just crazy what you hear in these bars mm -hmm. and i think most people will attest especially the females yeah. that get hit on anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways got anything else for the great and wonderful people out there uh you know uh, oh yeah i was gonna rattle oh, off all of the different charities that's I do. right charities. and she has something wants you to get another tattoo <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, we know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I, I've thought about putting Z, Z here, but... Hey, well... No. They're getting... You know, no. Larry says no. <laughs> I'm thinking like... Okay, a, so everybody a else is going to make the decisions what I'm going to get. Have a sleeve. <laughs> Listen to Ben. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, and a shout out to these nonprofits that we worked with. Right, pa right. Paws and Stripes. Just Right, CLN, CLN Kids, People Helping People, New Mexico Autism Society, Albuquerque Kings, the Children's Grief Center, We Are the City, Safe House, um, also uh, Gardens of the Children, Planned Parenthood, uh, Age United AmeriCorps, Worldcraft, um, Baby, you know, we worked with a, and actually a, a child who had been born prematurely, uh, Growing Stage, TEDx ABQ actually we did something with them, um, and it looks like that's it. But <laughs> that's a lot of charities well, those to are work. A, with. a couple that we worked with that we actually documented. Um, at the end of the years when we were doing the Art Fusion every month, mm -hmm. we wanted to have a tally of how much we generated throughout the year as well as um, what we did for per charity. So, um, I mean, some of the numbers were uh, pretty high. I mean, uh, at our last Art Fusion that you went to. At O'Neill's, uh, we did have a little deal worked out that a percentage of the bar sales and food sales did go to right. um, the charity. But right. we raised just under four thousand bucks in wow. just a couple hours. So that is not we, bad. At we've all. got some, we've got some potential there. Yeah. So. so, do you have any idea how much you raised last year for the year? Uh, well, one thing I didn't mention is we went from a monthly basis to a quarterly basis. Right. Um, so, and then last year we, we had just kind of moved into a new location, so we only did 
Art Fusion twice last year. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's so, right. Yes. Um, and, and with that, we don't have a, a really good tally number right now, and it would not be um, something to really shoot up in the air right now. You know what I mean? Right. So, but uh, but you know we'll we'll see how we do with this next one at Ponderosa, mm -hmm. and you know I'll share with you. Maybe you can oh, share definitely. in a future show. Of we, course, we're able to do. Of and, course. Um, if you're out there and you're interested in checking out some really cool, unique live art and want to win it, and then also give back to the community while you're having a beer and potentially a good meal, mm -hmm. come check us out. Exactly. Yeah. I, like I said, I I went to this art fusion and it was very entertaining. It, it was. I didn't expect it to be entertaining. I was just kind of like, how is this going to be entertaining? And <laughs> I mean, I get there and I'm just sitting there and and then it starts and like. There's like an energy that comes from it. Mm -hmm. It's just like this intense energy from the artist, and and that is what it was was so awesome. Mm -hmm. So it, it's worth going to. Yeah. It is really, really worth going to. And you know, and if if you can only buy, if you can only afford to do one raffle ticket or five bucks, or you can afford to do a hundred at five bucks, it doesn't matter because every nickel counts, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I always say, I mean, that you're going out every every nickel counts. And no better way can you have a hangover and wake up the next day and feel good about it. <laughs> feel good about it. <laughs> hey, I'm really happy that I went and got drunk last yeah, night because, yeah, yeah I, like, you know, I <laughs> I was supposed to only donate $10, but, well, I guess I donated $1,000. I yeah. don't know what to say, you know. <laughs> so, you know, and it's actually cool that, um, that a lot of those agencies you're working with benefit children, yeah. which I'm a big pusher on in fact we've partnered with New Mexico Dream Center mm -hmm. um, which is a homeless youth safety house basically yep. um, and in fact the director from that Shelly Rep, will be on this show next Wednesday so you guys make sure you tune in to see what she has to say Definitely. But, uh, we hooked up with them throughout the karaoke season last year and they're gonna be back with us again um, at uh, the events and we'll be partnering up with them again so yeah we'll have to connect with them sometime and right. see if we can't work with them in a future art fusion exactly but it's just really i mean our youth is our future so if we we've got to take care of the youth yeah and that's really the bottom line so yeah. well, they won't take care of us no <laughs> no that's a fact mm -hmm. yes that's a fact so again we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight we look forward to seeing you next week look forward to singing with you tonight tomorrow whenever Ben looks forward to tattooing, tattooing you, you. <laughs> drawing on you, like making you his, what do you call those boards again? Canvas. Canvas. <laughs> yes, you can be his live canvas. Yes. Even though you all want me to get another tattoo, it's going to take a lot more than that. <laughs> See you all later. Thank Good night. You. Thank you. Oh, and by the way. Uh, Don't forget. Let's not forget the sponsors. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they pay the lights. They do, they do. People like you pay the bills. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one. And, yeah. So, anyways, um, Double L Media produces this show. They are bad to the bone. So, uh, if you need any video work, of course, Double L Media is where it's at. You can find them all over our website. Uh, Twisted Arbor, you've seen them. You've seen the amazing trees that she does. Mm -hmm. It's a unique gift. Great. I promise you, if you get a gift like this for some, a friend, family member, they're going to remember this a lot more than something you go buy at Walmart. I promise you. Oh, definitely. There is no, no doubt about it. Um, so think about that as a gift. Drastic Entertainment for supporting Call Me Oz and doing everything that she does for the karaoke community. Her entire company is out there. Um, and of course, Red Velvet Underground for a constant support of Call Me Oz. We appreciate that very much. And of course, we appreciate Archetype Tattoo. So, appreciate you. Oh yes, and of course, Effing, Effing Bar for uh, sponsoring our shows too. You guys, there's getting so many of them. Like, I need a list written down. It's, it's right in front of me. Maybe we should tattoo this on me. Like, I think we can. Like yeah, we, we'll do it. I've got an idea. We'll just tattoo it on my arm. Oh. And then instead of me saying this, I'll just say, here you go. There you go. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. We'll televise it. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
We'll see y'all later. Have a good one. Yeah.